Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining us for the Q&A. We've got a good crowd in here. I'm very excited to introduce my guest, so please make a lot of noise for him. He's come a long way to see you guys. Aljamain Sterling. <laughs> this is my guys right here. <laughs> OK, we've got a couple of microphones set up. I believe there's one there and one over on this side as well. So if you've got questions, Line up behind the microphones and, and we'll get to you as soon as we can. Um, so, Liverpool, what do you think? You've been out, like, every night you've been here. I've been raging <laughs> with the Liverpool fans. I'm loving it. You guys have great hospitality, been hanging out with everybody, and uh, it's been a great time so far. Yeah. So, so where, where have you been? You've been on a bit of a tour of the UK. You went down to London. So what have you been doing? Tell us about your journey. I came out to London to go visit my grandma. So... Uh, she's from Jamaica, but she lives in the UK. She's been here for probably about 30 years now. Um, down in Brixton, so we hung out, got to see my cousins, hung out with everybody. A lot of family over here, got a lot of roots over here as well. So it was cool to catch up with everybody. I haven't been here since I was probably like 12 back in uh, London. So it was fun. It was a good time and lots of partying, as we say, a lot of smashing a lot of pints. <laughs> He's getting it, right? He's getting it. So, we got any, any questions? We've got nobody lined up at these microphones. Come on, this is Liverpool. I was expecting something more. <laughs> I don't know, mate. You know as well as me. We'll find out soon, though, I'm sure. Dan. So, yeah. Oh, there we go. There got we go. A, got a question for you, Dan. Fire away, mate. So, we you stepped on the scales before at the uh, <laughs> early weigh-ins. I was just checking for collaboration purposes. Don't wind us up when you're getting out, mate. <laughs> no, honestly, I was literally just checking the weight from one scales to the next. I'm far too heavy to step in for the main event, so don't worry about that. That's not happening. Any um, news on you coming out in the future, then, or what? Uh, I, I plan on having one more. Honestly, I've, I've got one golden ticket, and I will have one more. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. We've got another question over here. Hi, Aljo. How's it going? Doing good. Uh, just a question for you. So I know you came off a good win recently. What do you think is your path now to get to the title or to get to the number one spot? Who, who are you eyeing up at the minute? Well, I'm trying to fight the guy who just sits and commentates now. He's, I think he's been retired for the past two years, uh, Dominic Cruz. <laughs> so if you're watching, you know who I want to fight. That's who I definitely want to fight. I think that's the next fight that makes sense. He doesn't have an opponent. It's been two years since he's been removed, since uh, he's been dethroned by Cody. You got you to gotta, shit or get off the pot, man. Time to, time to keep this division going. Stop, ju stop jamming up the division. You know? We want to fight. So let's go. Makes sense. Hope you get it. All the best. Thank you. So you must have grown up in a time when Dominic Cruz was at the top of the division. You, were, you must have been watching him as a fan. So oh, yeah. now you're calling him out. I mean, there must be a little bit of like, wow, you know, it's still Dominic Cruz. I'm still going to fight this guy at some point. But you're calling him out now as, a, as an opponent. So is there something in this game that you feel like you can beat him on? 
He's a guy I've been watching growing up through the ranks for a very, very long time. I mimicked a lot of my early stages, like a lot of my careers from the, uh, from the amateur route circuit all the way to my early pro days. And uh, a lot of his style, I, I, I picked up on it. And um, I just think it's a perfect matchup. And like I said, it's time for the, the idols to become your rivals. Uh, I was uh, uh, Henry Burrell. I looked up to that guy as well, but I knew I could beat that guy. Just give me some time to develop my skills, and my time will come. And, uh, you know, same thing that happened with him. He was a big dog in this division, too. I think it's time for the young bucks to start building themselves up and uh, making their runs for the title. So here I am. I'm trying to trying to stake my claim for to make one more run for the belt, man. I think it's right there. I'm in reach, and I'm going to go get that shit. Just do it. Good stuff. I got another question. What's your question, my friend? What do you think of Darden? I <laughs> I need a translator. What do you think of Darden? <laughs> Darren's tough, man. He's a good guy. He's a big boy for this division. Um, but I think it kind of reminds me of the Brett Johns fight for myself. 15-0, he's 16-0, three fights in the UFC. I think it might just be a little too much too soon. I think that's a guy you might need to, you might need to, you might need to build him up a little bit more. What do you think of me? <laughs> you're a stud. You're an animal. I am. I'm a machine. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I took a picture with Darren. I like Darren. He's a cool guy. He's just fighting my boy. <laughs> Next question, please. How's it going? Uh, Dan, if you come back for a fight, will you come back with the uh, red mohawk? Will I come back with the red mohawk? I'd come back with a mohawk, but it might not be red, you oh. know. I, I don't know, I feel, I feel blue, something blue's different. Blue's better. Blue, you reckon, blue, you reckon. <laughs> I, think, uh, I think we'd start an argument in this building <laughs> if you said that. I'll stay impartial and go with green, I think, you know, something like that, maybe. Uh, what, what, what's your thoughts on the, um, the new system of the weigh-in, so they do it in the morning and not, you know, like, right now, live with us? You know, to be honest, f in my opinion, the jury's still out on it. We're still trying to figure out whether it's a good thing or not. Obviously, people are still missing weight, so it's not fixed that. I don't think it's really helped with the rehydration process necessarily. Now, for, as a fighter, I never had to do the early morning weigh-ins. I was in the, I was in the back, back in the good old days when, you know, we, we were just waiting on the day on the scales here. And for me, there was, that was an easy process because you wake up, you start your weight cut, you step on the scales, you go to bed, you wake up the next day, and that's fight day. Now, I don't want to have to think about, so I, mean, I know this, this fight week's one day removed, but normally, weighing on a Friday, I don't want to have to start cutting weight on a Thursday night and then sleep through the night dehydrated to step on the scales at 9 o'clock the next morning. So for me, I don't think it works very well. And I think, well, I'll equate this to Molly McCann because obviously she, she was a pound over this morning. Fighters, we, we have a circadian cycle. Your body works in a rhythm. And if you get used to making weight at a cert certain time for a fight every, every time, or you get used to cutting in the morning to weighing in the afternoon, your body gets used to that. So it's very difficult for a lot of fighters to come up to the UFC from another league and try and make that adjustment for their, for their debut. So I think that's something to bear in mind. I don't think it's perfect. And I think people missing weight, especially if it's a massive amount, I think we need to start talking about point deductions in the first round. So they actually start at a disadvantage because money's money, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. A lot of fighters don't care about money. We're not interested. We want to fight and be the best. So ultimately, it needs to impact their career and not their pocket. Yeah. I like that. And what do you think yourself? I, I'm on board. At the moment. I, I don't like the morning weigh-ins. I think the whole purpose of it was to stop severe weight cutting and dehydration, but you're giving us more time. So if I have more time, I know I can suffer and still have more time to recover, if that makes sense. I'm a wrestler. We had one hour, sometimes two, to make after we step on that scale to recover, and then we compete within probably the next hour. So when you come from that mindset, you can't cut as much weight wrestling as you can for fighting. I couldn't make this weight class back in, back in college. I could not do that. I don't even know how I used to do it back in college. Now we got all this, all, we got more than 24 hours now. It doesn't make any sense to me. I think it's, I think the weight, I think the, you step on the scale closer to the fight, and then you're closer to weight, you're not gonna, you're risking concussions. You're risking getting knocked out. So you're not gonna wanna severely dehydrate your body to get into a fight. I think you're gonna have guys fighting closer to their, their natural weight classes, which is what most people want anyway. I know I want to, I don't wanna be cutting down to 36. I walk around, I was three weeks ago, I was 168 and a half. That's, that's a lot of weight, it's a lot of weight. I'm not a big guy. I'll cut to whatever weight you like. I just don't want to have to start at 5 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. 
that's that's that's, that's the thing for me. Starting early in the morning and fighting later in the evening, that doesn't work for me. And as an analyst, I like to see the two guys on weight facing off because I want to see where they're at mentally, see if they're strong, see if the weight cut was intelligent. There's a, there's a lot of things that can be learned about your opponent in this moment as well. And with the early morning weigh-ins, you don't get that face-off. And I like that as a, as a fan and as an analyst as well as a fighter. So, just my thoughts. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate Good it. question. Uh, oh, the mic. Uh, I just want to know who was your like biggest in inspiration to get into the sport. Good question. Biggest inspiration. What do you reckon? That's for me or Dan. That's both of us. Both Go for you. it. Uh, biggest inspiration. I went to school with John Jones my freshman year. So once I seen him doing it, I knew it was something that I could honestly do. I reached out to him. This was when MySpace was popular. <laughs> Sent him a message, slid in the DMs. I was like, bro, I can do this. I was like, no, you can't. You're not going to come. I came down to practice, and I haven't looked back since. Thank you. Nice. Good question. Good question. For me, there was a, there was a load of guys coming up. I mean, I, I watched a lot of the old school boxers like Nigel Benn and Chris Eubank, and they were inspirations for me. But in mixed martial arts, guys like Jens Pulver, uh, Randy Couture, BJ Penn, they were the guys that were pioneering before me. So I, I kind of followed along their footsteps. Thank you. Thank you. Next question, please. Um, hey, I got a question for Dan. Arguably, you know, you're a pioneer of British MMA. You're one of the idols for Britain. And um, you've had a lot of hard fights. You fought GSP, Carlos Conde. You fought some of the best. And I love to watch your fights. Who is arguably one of your hardest opponents, one you trained the hardest for, and how far has British MMA come from when you began? It, it's come along a, a ridiculous amount. I mean, I used to have to travel from one city to another just to get a bit of jiu-jitsu and a bit of strength and conditioning. Now, like, you know, even, even guys signing with the UFC in their debut have got a full team of people around them that are taking care of their, their rest, their nutrition, and everything. And I mean, I would have loved to have been a part of that wave because I would have liked to have seen how I could have performed a bit better. But I kind of like the old school slog, you know what I mean? I like, to, I like the, you know, carrying a log down the river trend and that kind of stuff. It's, for me, psychologically, I like to be preparing for war. Um, so I, 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 I enjoyed being a part of the old school. But I like the new improvements. I like the more intelligent approach to, tr to sparring, to training. I like people not taking too many shots to the head in training because that's ultimately where you take most of your damage. I'm sure you'll admit, you know, or you, we oh, were yeah. talking about this earlier, your, your original gym that you were training at. Yeah, Those we beat the crap out of each other. <laughs> <laughs> like in, in the beginnings of UK mixed martial arts, we didn't have coaches. The Roughhouse team, we had no coaches. We were a team of fighters and we taught each other what we had. But ultimately, we, we toughened ourselves up for the fights by sparring hard. And that's the only way we learned. And I like the professional approach now. The UFC Performance Institute is incredible. Um, anybody that's been there, I mean, you've checked it out as well, I'm sure. The, the Institute is amazing. So lots of these progressions are going to make the fighters healthier for the full length of their life. You know, a lot of my teammates and stuff, we're getting old now and, you know, getting into my 30s, struggling to get out of bed in the morning, that kind of stuff. Hopefully that will be avoided later on with the, the new uh, developments with training. Thank you. Thank you. Next question. All right, boys, how's it going? Um, Aljo, you said before you want to fight Cruz, but say you do get past him, um, who do you think you're going to be fighting? Is it going to be TJ or Cody? Who do I think is going to win that match, the yeah, rematch? I, I, I think TJ takes it again. I really do. I think, um, I think he got a little over-aggressive the, um, the first round in the first matchup, and that's where he got clipped. And it was actually, it looked exactly like that sparring video that they posted. That same exact right hand dropped him. And then he adjusted in that second round. And, uh, I think uh, he started using the switch stances a lot more and throwing blanket kicks to kind of set up everything else. And I think that set up his uh, combination at the end to put him away. Yeah, boss. But hopefully I get to fight one of them. I think I'm going to probably fight TJ at some point. I just want to fight all these guys, man. At the end of the day, you can only do this for so long. I want to be able to say, like, I fought everybody, all the best guys, while they were in their primes, while, you know, I, that's, that's pretty much why I got into the sport. I want to prove that I'm the best. You know, win or lose, I'm going out there and I want to put on a good show and just try to make my run. That's, that's all you can do, you know? Yeah, boss man, thank you. And Dan, you're a legend, lad. Can't wait to see you back. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. Yeah, Next question, right. please. I've got a question for both of you. What do you think the score is going to be tonight between Liverpool and Real Madrid? <laughs> 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 What do you reckon? What do you reckon? I honestly, I have, I have absolutely no clue about football. I know it's going to upset people. Just any score. <laughs> Just say two numbers. Uh, what do you reckon? What do you reckon? One, zero. Who two? Choose, choose carefully because you already said Wonderboy. Liverpool! <laughs> <laughs>
Hey, the only thing I'm concerned with is if Liverpool win, the parade is going to really cause us problems on Sunday, trying to get to the arena and back. So don't celebrate too hard, and make sure when you see the buses driving along, you clear the roads for us, because we want to get started on time. So just a quick thing for tomorrow. Thank, Thank you, guys. You. Thanks. Good question. Next question, please. Hiya, Dan. Uh, just a question. You said he wants to come back for one more fight. <laughs> Yeah, you said you want to come back for one more fight. I was wondering, at what weight class, and is there anyone in mind that you'd like to fight? Um, to be honest, I, I considered myself much closer to lightweight now, and if I was going to come back, I'd, I'd do 55. But to be honest, watching the guys get on the scales all dried out this morning, I'd probably just stick with 170. I don't really care who the opponent is. You know, I'm not, I'm not interested in getting the belt or getting in the rankings. I just want a fun fight with, with a veteran that everybody knows, you know? Would you fight CM Punk? <laughs> <laughs> A, a veteran of mixed martial arts, not pro wrestling. <laughs> uh, I, I like CM Punk. He's taking a big risk stepping into the UFC, and I, I respect him for taking that risk. But, yeah, it wouldn't be a fair fight. Levels. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Thank you. Good question. Next question, please. Uh, this is for both of you. Uh, with Till missing weight, if the fight does go ahead, do you think that will affect him psychologically at all? No. <laughs> I don't think anything affects Darren psychologically, to be honest. He seems so focused. Yeah, you got three and a half extra pounds that you didn't have to lose. Uh, you can't really, I think if anything, that's a, that's a, it's an advantage. At the end of the day, it's an advantage. Just like, uh, what was that other girl, Mackenzie Dern? Yeah. What was she, like seven and a half nope, pounds? That was like half a person, though. Well, she you weren't even by. trying. <laughs> You're not even trying at that point. You know what I mean? It's kind of like, it's kind of a slap in the face. Not saying that's what Till did, but. What she did it was kind of a slap in the face. You didn't, you didn't even try. You really did not try. Yeah. Anybody that saw Till on the scales, he's a middleweight. Honestly, he's a big that's guy. why we call him the gorilla. I mean, he's moving up. He's going to be a middleweight within the next three or four fights, I think. So we, we've got to enjoy him as a welterweight while we can. The only, the only setback, because he missed weight this morning, is that the likelihood is he's not going to leapfrog the interim title, uh, title holder to get a title shot. We need to see him on the scales at 170 to get that title shot. And, and yeah. I think that's, that's the biggest drawback from this, this morning. All right, cheers. Thanks. Thank you. I recognize this guy. You're a savage, yeah. right? <laughs> what, do, what do you think about McGregor and Khabib? I think it's a great fight. I think it's definitely going to happen. I think they definitely set the stage for big promo. So I think that's a big money fight. I hope they do it in Russia. Right. That'd be amazing. Nah, we can have it here instead. You want it here? Oh, the Echo, yeah. 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 I, <laughs> I think McGregor could fill this with just his mates, to be honest. <laughs> Thank you. Next question. What do you make of Kobe Covington getting an interim title shot at welterweight against Los Anjos? Yeah, what do you reckon to that? What do you reckon to that? Oh, was, he really, was he really gone that long for an interim title, you know? Yeah, I, I don't think so. I don't think it makes a whole lot of sense, but it gets people interested and it gets people talking, so I guess it works. Whatever works to get people interested and in, invested in the fights and... Kobe has been doing nothing short of selling fights, so uh, that's going to be an interesting matchup. I'm actually really looking forward to that. Cause well, what's your pick? RDA, what do you think? What do you think? He's the bigger man. I would say that Kobe should win with his wrestling, blanking him a little bit, but then RDA is so good on the ground, so it's kind of like uh, it's going to be a stylistic matchup between the two. I, I, but if I'm going to have to pick, I'm going to go with Kobe. Yeah. Kobe, for sure. Interesting. Yeah, it's, it's, it's an interesting one. It's a weird one. My only thing, I just wish the interim title belts were a different color. You know, I don't want to see interim title fight, title champions with, with gold belts. It doesn't make sense. Should be like second brass. Like bronze or silver or something like second place. Second place belt. Not the know? real one. Chocolate. The real there we go. Chocolate. No, nobody's making weight. Don't give Khabib an interim title. He's never making weight. Next question, please. Hey, Dan. Hi. Big fan. Thank you. <laughs> that sounded really seductive. Uh, just, just wanted to know, what are you walking around at No. And what would you like to fight at if you were to go fighting again? Uh, I, was, I was 182 this morning. That was what it said on the scales when I stepped on. So, I mean, I'm, I've still got a bit of Christmas dinner around my waist. Did you, did you go to Greg's as well like me? So, <laughs> I did. I did. Every time on the way to the hotel and back. No, I'm, I'm not too far off. I think, to be honest, I could comfortably make 170 without making much effort. And a lot of the guys at 170 that I would like to fight are, you know, fast, light strikers anyway. So I, you know, I, I don't think it makes much difference what weight I would step on the scales at. Yeah, I, I, I love watching your Instagram videos and everything, man. Thank I'm you. Fan. 
Thank you. Appreciate it. Next question, please. Um, hi again. I've got just one more question. Fire away. Um, if, if you would or if you could, would you go back to the no holds bars days where you could just stand on the head, do all the vile things? <laughs> or if pride came back, would you consider fighting in pride, you know, take the elbows out, put the soccer kicks back in? Do you ever think that's interesting or do you think it, it's a bit more interesting than the UFC because it seems you can stall when you're on the floor, so why not just stand on the head when they're on the floor? Yeah, were, were, you, <laughs> were, you, were you a fan of Pride, Alja? Were you a fan of Pride fighting championships? I was. I was a big fan of the yellow card. Yeah, that's, that a, was that's my a good thing. thing. The yellow yeah. card. There's a lot of times I'm in the clinch and I'm like, I'm holding the guy. I'm like, I'm not going to let go until the ref breaks us up because I don't want to let go. Yeah. And I don't want to let go and catch an elbow. So I'm like, ref, I'm waiting for the ref to step in because I don't want to sit there and have like a super long pause in the action. But sometimes it's just like that, you know? But yeah. yellow card would be sick. Yeah, the yellow card's a good thing. The, you know, I like pride rules. I always wanted a couple of fights in pride. I didn't like the fact that they didn't use elbows because I feel like that's a major weapon that really changes the sport, especially in the clinch. The thing I did like was knees to the head on the ground. Yeah. I don't like soccer kicks. I mean, personally, as a fighter, yeah, all day soccer kicks, headbutts, whatever you like. Anything that can damage them, I'm down for it. But as, as an analyst and as, a, and as an ambassador of the sport, the difficulty in selling soccer kicks to someone that doesn't like MMA is impossible. So to, to just leave that out for the time being, I don't think it's a big difference. Mark you know? Coleman used to use the head button. He's a UFC Hall of Famer. Right. Bring the yeah. headbutt back, maybe. Well, I mean, you watched the Smashing, Mach uh, Smashing Machine with Mark Kerr, and that was his main weapon. You know, yeah. it, it used to be a s the thing with headbutts is that it makes the sport very boring because you get one guy sitting in the other guy's guard just slowly. <laughs> 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 I mean, you know what I mean? It, after, that's all you hear, that's all that's you like see. And they usually <laughs> hold on to the... <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just, it, it just slows the sport down a little bit. But knees to the head, I think, speeds up a lot of the, uh, lot of the scrambles. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Next question. All right, Dan, do you think um, CM Punk deserves his spot on the main card? That's a good question. And honestly, no, I don't. I don't. I, I like CM Punk, and I think, like I said before, it's a big... <laughs> You know, we, we've all got to start somewhere. Because he's such a famous star, he couldn't step onto a lower-level show because he's going to get fed to the Lions. So when he's stepping into the UFC, at least he knows the UFC are going to match him properly, which is what they have done. He doesn't deserve the exposure that he's getting over the fighters lower down the card, but ultimately, if you put him on the card, more people will watch it than would before anyway because it's CM Punk and they don't normally watch MMA. So it swings and roundabouts. So would you say fight pass card? I would say so, yeah, prelims, you know. It, I, I think it's important to feel like you're earning your way up the card, you know. When you get on a main card, you feel like you're, you're, one of the pre, you know, you're one of the premier fighters on the card that people are tuning in to watch. Now, I mean, CM Punk is that, but unfortunately he's not had the... <laughs> is there an echo in it? It feels like Same there's an echo in it. question to... What do you reckon, CM Punk? I'm going to take a uh, no for a thousand. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I agree, he's got to work his way up for sure. Um, but it definitely brings more eyeballs to the UFCs, and that's pretty much what they want, you know. So, do I agree with it? No. If I'm on that card and he takes he takes a spot from me, I'm gonna be kind of pissed. I want to be on the main card. How about that? <laughs> Thank you. Good question. Next one. Hey Dan. Um, How are you, mate? With so many people missing out on tickets due to ticket touts and stuff, when are we gonna see stadium fights in the UK? Stadium fights in the UK. Yeah. Um. It would be great. It would be amazing. You know, some of the problems we've had with, with, the, with bigger events, with stadium events, is that there's a, there's a curfew on the area that, around because a lot of stadiums are quite close to residential areas. Which though, so they have a cutoff at like 9 or 10 o'clock at night, which does affect us. And the other thing as well, if you want a stadium event, it's kind of got to be a pay-per-view to make sure we've got the, the financial backing to put it on. And with the time zone difference, it makes it difficult. We, we, need, we need a Darren Till or someone like that to rise to the top and bring those pay-per-view events over, like Michael Bisping did in Manchester. And also, what do you reckon it would take to get more weight classes added, especially with the weight cuts? Man, we have been banging on about this for a long time. I would love more weight classes. I, I would absolutely love it. I think we need something between lightweight and welterweight, something between welterweight and middleweight. Other than that, I think we can wait for the time being. You know, a, a cruiserweight maybe, a, a cutoff at 235 would make the heavyweight division more interesting. But ultimately, we need more weight classes. We need more champions. You know, we need more opportunities for these fighters to move through weight classes instead of making these big 15-pound jumps, which ultimately is not good for them. Thank you. Thank you. I like your T-shirt, my friend. <laughs> Look at that. Old school I fear of the fighter. Cool, man. Nice. Um, what did you think of MV MVP's performance last night and MVP against Paul Daly? 
We were just talking about this on the bus, right? MVP, yeah. what do you reckon? I think he's a really good fighter. Uh, I, he actually, ha he kind of reminds me of Wonderboy, actually. The way he moves on his feet. Very elusive, hard to hit, great lateral movement. Um, and he's a good showman, you know? And that's what a lot of people like. They like to see the showman. But as soon as you lose doing that, everyone's going to be like, ah, you shouldn't have been clowning around like that. That's what you get kind of thing. But he's fun to watch. He's definitely a fun fighter to watch. He's flirting on the edge a little bit, isn't he? Like he's yeah, I, I love it. I love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's great. Yeah. It is good. I'd love to see him get the Paul Daly fight. I, obviously, I'm good friends with Paul. And Paul's not going to show him any respect. He's going to march him down and try and put that left hand. Not win that, have not they? Well, it's, it's, ju it's just an interesting fight because Paul's going to push forward and try and knock him out. Um, MVP's got to try and keep him off and set him up. It, it's, it's a fascinating one, but I hope it comes together because I would like to see that one. Thank you. So, uh, yeah, last question, my friend. We've got to wrap this one up ready for the weigh-ins. Just interested what your guys' thoughts on uh, DC v Stipe is going to look like and what the yeah. likely outcome is because I'm sort of racking my brain on that. Okay, what do you reckon? I got the big dog, Stipe <laughs> Miocic. I think, I think it's, a, you know, it's a big ask for DC to step up and take on Miocic, especially because a lot of the weapons that DC has at light heavyweight, Stipe has at heavyweight. He's got the conditioning, he's got the game planning, he's a very good mixed martial artist, he's good at sticking to, sticking to a plan and, and seeing it through to the final bell. It would be, I'd be very, very impressed if DC wins it. I'm leaning towards Stipe as well. I think though. it'll be good at the re either way, though. I think it's going to be... Oh, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Thanks a lot, guys. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Please make some noise for Al Jermaine Sterling as he leaves the stage. Oi, 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 oi. <laughs> we'll see you in a few minutes for the weigh-ins. Thank you. Good work, man.